everyone, my name is Natalie and I'm going to be refuting the claim uh, electric cars will replace the traditional internal combustion motor in the near future. And my opponent, opponent uh, presented a secondary claim that one, electric cars are cost efficient, two, electric cars are eco-friendly, and three, electric cars are more reliable. So my opponent mentions that the Clean Vehicle Rebate Project offers up to $7,000 in electric vehicle rebates for the purchase or lease of new eligible zero emissions and plug-in hybrid light duty vehicles. And in his claim that rewards, rebates, and incentives lower the price, in, rea in reality, uh, the cost of electric vehicles is not more cost efficient than traditional internal combustion motor cars because you need government funds to actually lower the price. Saying that there is a lower cost for electric vehicles due to the government rebates and tax credits is not an efficient uh, to, and the tax credit is not an efficient function of like the actual car. Uh, but these cars are not cheap on their own. They need to be subsidized with financial assistance. The government is playing a role in the low price of the car. And although electric vehicles are cheaper in the long run than owning one, they have an initial large uh, payment. The more affordable electric cars can range from $30,000 to $40,000. He also states that electric cars are cheaper to charge than paying for actual gas. It says that electric vehicles can save up to $750 to $1,200 compared to a 27 mile per gallon and $3.50 fossil fuel vehicle, but this point can only work if you can prove that the gas prices will continue to increase and will not go up, um, will not go above, or be, will actually not go below $3.50. We, we would have to assume that the gas prices will increase in the future and not go before, and in order to prove that the electrical vehicles, cars are more cost efficient. Also, according to an article on how stuff works, uh, around every 10 years, electric vehicle battery batteries wear out, and they cost around a thousand to six thousand dollars to replace, um, depending on their car model. Um, to their second point that electric cars are eco-friendly, he mentions how electric vehicles produce fewer greenhouse gases and use um, and use fewer fossil fuels, as well as limiting air pollutants. Uh, the claim is assuming that consumers are driven to buy electric cars because they are eco-friendly, but it doesn't consider that some consumers may value price point more or the safety aspect of the car. The eco-friendly aspect of the car is just one reason why it might attract consumers, but it isn't the primary reason why consumers are buying electric vehicles. And according to Electric Vehicle Connect, it says that the main reason why consumers are buying and considering electric vehicles is because the government is making electric vehicles more affordable through tax credits and not because they are eco-friendly. Uh, to their third point, electric cars are more reliable. He brought up some points that said that the drivetrain for electric vehicles contains about 20 parts compared to a traditional car which has about 2,000 parts and how electric vehicles are easier to maintain because they don't require oil changes and regular maintenance. According to Earth 911, they don't mention, uh, my opponent doesn't mention how electric vehicles can also become an inconvenience because there is an inconsistent amount of charging stations available, uh, such as when you're on a road trip or you live in an area that um, electric vehicles aren't as common. And also electric vehicles have, um, they run pretty short distances. Most electric vehicles are limited to a range of 60 to 100 miles and only a small minority of models actually range from 200 to 300 miles. And lastly, charging electric, uh, charging electric vehicles takes about four hours to charge, and it, or more, depending on like what model electric vehicle you have. And based on the information and counterclaims I presented, um, electric cars will not replace the traditional combustion motor in the near future. Thank you.
All right, the organizational stuff is pretty clear at the beginning. Uh, on the cost issue, you basically suggest that the only reason they're cost competitive is because of uh, government subsidies. If there's any reason to believe that the government subsidies are unlikely to continue, or if the argument is that uh, you know the the subsidy itself is in fact uh, a burden on the the culture, the the taxpayers, uh, whoever. Uh, that I think would maybe make that argument a little bit more useful, but you're right when you're talking about the, you know, where the cost comes from, you're getting a discount on that, and that's the, you know, that's the reason that people can afford to buy these cars that are really out, like you said, past the price point that most consumers are looking for. Um, I, I thought that on the argument concerning uh, savings on gas, for instance, that you had a good uh, piece of information, I, I do think you need a source on it that suggests that the price of gas has to stay above 350 a gallon in order for it to be to get those uh, apparent savings. It would not be hard to point out how the gas prices have fluctuated substantially in the last few years and that because of an increase in production in the United States, the gas prices actually have declined for a period of time and are likely to stay relatively stable for a long period of time. That I think would enhance the uh, first argument that you're making there. Uh, the 10-year battery replacement thing, again, it depends on how long people keep cars. If the average person keeps their car 10 years or more, then I can see that that's going to be an issue. It would be helpful to have an additional piece of evidence on that. On the eco-friendly issue, you basically suggest that that's not a, a consideration about whether or not people are going to buy it and whether or not it's going to be successful. It might, have a, it might be an advantage of electric cars over other kinds of vehicles, but it's not the kind of thing that's uh, useful in predicting what people will do when it comes to making the decision to buy it. I, I think that's a reasonable uh, uh, argument to make, and you did have some evidence that suggests that uh, you know it's primarily the price point that people are looking at here, and the fact that uh, people are buying these cars is largely a result of the government subsidies. Uh, so that also suggests that the price point is the thing that's most important. And on the reliability issue, uh, you kind of go from a different direction at it when you talk about reliability when it comes to breakdowns and that sort of thing. Uh, you don't really deny that uh, the electric vehicles seem to be uh, more simple and therefore less likely to have uh, breakdowns on them, but you go in a different direction when it comes to reliability, and that is the ability to charge the vehicle. And I thought that you had some good presses on that. I think that you could probably find a little bit more information on the lack of uh, charging stations and uh, maybe some information about how far people travel on an average day so that the, the charges that they do hold uh, might seem less uh, desirable or appealing. All right, thank you.